Let's clear this area. We'll get all this stuff out of the way and the pavers too. And then we need to make some room over there so the truck can come in. Hi, my name's Kate. Today I'll be laying the groundwork for my new cottage garden. I live in the Pacific Northwest in Canada, zone nine. I'm two weeks away from my average last frost date. So this is a great time to finish prepping the garden for this year's growing season. So this is the space. It's about 20 feet by 20 feet, about 400 square feet. And it's mostly grass with bindweed. The bindweed hasn't come up yet from the winter, but come take a look at what I found under the pavers. All of these white roots, those are bindweed roots. And all of the tips were trying to grow up through the pavers. So that's also what's happening to this pavement. And I'd like to save the pavement. It's already had enough damage so far from the bindweed. So I'm gonna cover this whole area with that cardboard and smother the grass and the bindweed. It'll take some time and I'll probably have to hand weed the bindweed over the summer because it's so vigorous. But this is the same technique that I've been using in my veg garden pathways. So I know it's manageable and it should reduce the bindweed pressure on the pavement over time. So I'll top the cardboard with soil for the beds and wood chips for the paths. But before we get to that, let's take a look at this space that I started last summer because some of it needs a redo. So there's three different materials here. This part is topsoil. We're gonna leave that, maybe spread it out a bit. It's a bit thick. This heap is horse manure, which is now well aged. So we'll scoop that up and set it aside. And this section in the back is a problem. We need to redo this section. This is some extra mulch spread over brown shipping paper. I got a little overconfident about smothering grass when I did this last summer. So it needs a redo. We'll see if I can get some of this out of here. But it's also a good example to show the tipping point of smothering grass. All right, I'll get these materials moved and then I'll start on the cardboard. This method of smothering grass is kind of a balancing act. The trick is to use a material that will outlive the grass but still break down so you can leave it in place. The problem with this brown paper is that it was disintegrating before the grass had given up. The reason cardboard works better is that it takes longer to break down than grass takes to die. So I definitely won't be making this mistake again, although it's not actually as bad as it looks. The big patch of grass in the middle was the dog. She dug through the paper so the grass came up easily. But all the little single tufts, those came through on their own. They were young and easy to cut through with the shovel, but I could tell there was more grass coming if I had left this any longer. Once I had the mulch lifted, I removed the visible bindweed roots from under the pavers and filled in the holes a bit. Then I started the cardboard. I added cardboard to that back section, I worked around the magnolia, and I just went close to the pathway in the corner. We're gonna leave it for now, it's not in the way, and it's gonna be a whole big thing to get that out. I used some scrap wood to hold down all that cardboard because it was a bit windy. It's a big enough space that I wasn't sure if I was gonna have enough cardboard or if I'd have too much, but it worked out just about right. I did my best to keep good overlaps between the pieces, and this will work perfectly fine for the grass. The bindweed, on the other hand, will make it through this for sure. For the bindweed, I would need two or three layers, huge overlaps, the biggest sheets of cardboard I can find. But realistically, that's not going to happen. So instead of waiting around until I can find all the perfect right pieces, we'll just give this a try. I'm glad I had enough cardboard for this space. So now onto the layout. I did draw this out inside to scale, but ultimately I'm gonna do this by feel. And I want this to feel like a garden with pathways, not a space with garden beds. So let's mock it up and see how it looks. I used a spare hose to outline the beds. It's fast, temporary, and lets you see your plans before you do any real work. So it's easy to make changes if you need to. Okay, so I've walked the paths. They're feeling pretty good. This hose is a bit wobbly because it's not very agreeable. 
but hopefully you can kind of see my idea here is that this is a path through the middle to the deck and then uh, we need a little path over to the gate here in front of the magnolia and then there'll be a big bed around this tree and then another big bed on this side with a little path to the grass here and there'll be one just right behind me as well. I guess I'm ready to start shoveling. This is the most exciting part for me. Seeing the layout with the proper materials is such a big visual change and it makes a huge impact. So I'm using a mix that's supposed to be plant ready and good enough for sowing seeds directly. It looks pretty good, so hopefully it does well. It's 50% topsoil, 30% compost, and there's some small pebbles for drainage. This is one cubic yard of soil, and it went farther than I thought it would. I will need to get a bit more when we take out the paved pathway in the corner, and I'd like to add a bit more in a few places, though it's probably not necessary. The soil in the lawn isn't too bad, but could benefit from extra organic material. In any case, this is a great start for the season. I got a lot done yesterday. It's looking so good. This morning I picked up some wood chips, so let's start working on the paths. Being in the Pacific Northwest, there are a lot of wood products available. These are cedar wood chips for the pathways. And cedar is great because it breaks down more slowly than some other woods, which means this material will last longer and I won't have to get more as often. It's the same as I have in the veg garden. On top of that, you really can't beat the smell of fresh cut cedar. I usually imagine cottage gardens with gravel or brick walkways. So I think it will be very interesting to see how the wood chips fit into a cottage garden. They will fade in the summer, and by fall, they'll be more of a muted silvery color. But at the moment, this is looking very Pacific Northwest, and it would look right at home as a shady garden filled with ferns, evergreens, and a variety of native plants. But that's not what we're doing here. To finish off this space, I added some old branch trimmings to the edge of the beds. I thought it was cute and helped to define the beds, and I can add more as I get them. This is looking so good. I'm so happy with this. Make sure you follow along so you can see how this garden progresses. Now that we have the layout, you can really see how this space is going to work. I love it. And I'm so excited to start the next step. So next, we get to start planting and I'll start with the trees. They'll be a big focal point in this space and a big help towards making it into a cottage garden. So make sure you follow along for that. But for now, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.